Are we talking about bugs today? We are indeed, and while I find bugs and insects quite interesting, we might need something to spice this one up a bit. Like beer, for example. Yeah! All bugs and insects, regardless of how terrifying and spindly their legs may be, haven't got shit on a swift stomp from a boot-covered foot. Like seriously, it's not even funny how easy it is to defeat near enough any insect with a stomp delivered to their head at Mach 3. Which is seemingly why the ironclad beetle has evolved directly to counter our most effective way of dealing with its kin. So Carl, tell us about this ironclad beetle. Well, the ironclad beetle obviously isn't its scientific name. Its scientific name is actually this word right here that I won't even try and pronounce if I'd not had a drink. And uh, there's not all that much known about this family of beetles, save for the fact they have incredibly tough exoskeletons. How tough are we talking? Well, entomologists, like also known as bug nerds, consider the ironclad beetle to be a curiosity of the insect world because its exoskeleton is so tough you literally cannot pierce it with a pin. So why would you want to drive a pin through an insect? Well, if people don't know, when you are like mounting insects for display, what you have to do is you have to like get a really long, thin pin, and obviously a dead insect, and then just like you drive it through the insect onto a mounting board, and then you put it on for display. And that's like when you go to museums and things like that, that's when you see all the insects on display, that's what they do with them. The problem is obviously the ironclad beetle is its exoskeleton so tough you can't do this. And the only way you can drive a pin through it is by damaging, like, you know, the carcass of the insect, which isn't ideal if you're mounting it for display. It's, oh, Dad, why has this bug got three legs missing? It looks like it's, like, had a fight with a shotgun. So, apparently, the only way you can actually, like, drive a pin through an ironclad beetle is, and I'm not making this up, drill a hole through it first with a tiny bug-sized power drill. Easy. Hmm. If I told you, Brad, there's an insect out there so tough, the only way you can like, get through its shell is with a power drill, you would immediately say, how do we start a petition to carpet bomb the area this bug lives in? Because that does not deserve to live. My first question would be, does it live nearby? <laughs> and then the second question is, I can it fly? Ironclad beetle. That's a sick ass name, isn't it, man? Ironclad beetle. Ironclad yeah. beetle. And it's, well, it's perfectly descriptive of what it is. Mm. So, like, we talked about another video that got cut, the Hero Shrew. So, like, the Hero Shrew is my favourite name for an animal. Because, like, holy shit, how do you live up to the name Hero Shrew? You're probably out of thinking, Carl, how do you live up to the name Hero Shrew? Well, this tiny little shrew creature, like this big, lives up to this name because you can't kill it. This little tiny shrew, also known as the Armoured Shrew, has an interlocking spine that's so thick the small shrew can be stomped on without injury. Right? And there's stories of people in, in the African bush finding them and like hitting them with sticks and stomping on them and they're just going whoop into the woods, like a tribble. It's ridiculous. What are you, what are you supposed to do about that? <laughs> a stomp-proof small furry animal. And I'm not like comfortable in a, like living in a world where animals that are the same size or smaller than my foot cannot be stomped to death. So I don't do that. Well, I'd like to have the option available to me. <laughs> do you know when you see, like, if you were being attacked by, like, a horde of tiny little furry shrews, we at least have the options, like, okay, I, you know, I can kick them and I can stomp them. Like, no, no, no. Those options go out to So how do I defeat these things? Like, this big, they're all over me. See, what I do is just run across them. But you can't. You can? You can, but they're still going to get you. They well, will get... if one clips onto the bottom of your, like, your... Your trousers, like a, a prickle bush. Oh, I just think you could lie on them and they would like carry you, like you're crowd surfing. Oh, like the fucking Pied Piper in Shrek Forever After. Doodle <laughs> just floats in on rats. <laughs> Moving back to the ironclad beetle, the thickness and hardness of its shell makes it largely impervious to most conventional forms of harm. And there are confirmed reports of the beetle surviving being stood on by people trying to stomp it to death. So a stomp-proof beetle already sounds quite terrifying. Yeah, I know. So do you want me to make it a little bit more terrifying for you? In addition to there being confirmed reports of ironclad beetles survive being stomped on, there are also reports of them survive being hit by cars. Like, as in people watching them in the middle of the road, just there. Oh, look, there's a little ironclad beetle. Can you see that, Billy? <laughs> see the little beetle? It's still going there, Billy. It's still going... They don't give a fuck! Do we know actually how much force an ironclad beetle can take before it'll die? No. And do you know why? Why? Because as I mentioned earlier, they're a scientific curiosity more than anything else. And because of that exact reason, no one's really bothered to study them. 
Surely if they're this strong, somebody somewhere will have thought maybe there's a way to repurpose this for our own use. Well, they have. Apparently in some parts of the world they use them as living jewellery. Li Except, living jewellery? Yeah, they like glue shit to them and use them as brooches. Ugh. I don't know. This, this, like, we're talking about like you know, the same kind of people probably buy those keychains with like living turtles inside them. But that's a thing. Yeah, the world's fucked up, folks. I saw when I went to China. So nobody's actually studied these bugs long enough to know how tough they actually are. No, we've never actually tested the limits of how strong they are. So as far as we're aware, this is Saitama in bug form. <laughs> we just don't know. All we do have is reports from entomology saying I can't drive a pin through it, I have to use a power drill. And drilling through something is very different to driving a pin through it. Which is why obviously you can drill through metal, but you can't like sledgehammer a nail through it no matter how hard you try. I just love the idea of right now that out there is a Saitama in bug form. Because, Brad, you love One Punch Man, I love One Punch Man. What's your favourite moment in One Punch Man where you think, oh, Saitama's not just strong, he's ridiculously durable. Mines, where he fights, I don't know the name of the guy, but he fights that guy's like, oh, I'm the master of psychic power. I'm making you experience the force of a black hole, like a million times Earth gravity, and Saitama's out at. What the? I love that there's online debates about Saitama versus people when he's designed to be infinite. How do you beat him? He's, he's supposed no... to be unbeatable. <laughs> the closest he's ever come to being challenged in any way is when he gets uppercutted to the moon. And all he does is he holds his breath, looks and goes, oh, there's the earth, and with his human eyes, pinpoints exactly where he was launched from. Holy fuck, it's not even a debate, of course Saitama wins. But, oh man, I love the idea that there's this tiny little bug out there somewhere might be the strongest thing in the universe and we just don't know. We've got like a Goku beetle somewhere out there who's doing tiny little press-ups. It's like, one day, one fucking day. Tiny, just... tiny press-ups as if they, they, they don't start strong, they have to work on it. He's just waiting, he's just out there wearing like weighted clothing and on each individual he's got six limbs and each one's got like the weighted things that run. <laughs> the rockly the weight. weighted rockly weights on each other. Think though, let's combine all this into one to create like the most alpha beetle ever. He's Remember, also... Brad, you're photoshopping this. How am I photoshopping <laughs> a beetle? Because there's a picture of the beetle, so we could beetle. Goku's weighted clothing, Rock Lee's weights on each limb, Piccolo's weighted turban and his like shoulder pads, Vegeta's gravity chamber, what else can he have? Yeah, give it Kratos' tattoo as well. Alright, that'll do. So give it Kratos' tattoo. Don't add anything else to this bug. No, this the this bug is hedging up. <laughs> it's not. It's really, really not. It can get thicker. The thickness can continue. Maybe, give maybe, it... maybe in each of its uh, hands it has a different weapon. Oh, it does. Oh, what other weapons can maybe we give it? Maybe it's got Mjolnir in one. Yeah, what? Because it, it's worthy. It's worthy, but it's not, it doesn't need to be worthy. It's to be strong enough to pick it up, which this beetle is. So seen as this, uh, this unbeatable god beetle. But let's let's give it the elder ones. Why not? We watched, we watched one, that video today. Why not? It's got the elder one, Mjolnir. What other fuck you think? We've got four more limbs. Four no, wait, more. No, two limbs. Because obviously it's got to stand up. What else we got? Right, I'm... <laughs> what other two weapons can it have? What other weapons from a fiction are unbeatable? The thing that Kratos uses to slaughter everything. And he's got one more weapon it can have to be called the ultimate god tier mega beetle. No, the, wait, the Murasama Blade from the end of Revengeance that um, Jetstream Sam uses. Why the fuck not? No <laughs> idea what that is. Just put in the Murasama Blade he uses that shit. Note to future Brad, you contributed to this. Yep, yes you did. As a direct result of the general lack of fucks shown by entomologists and scientists about why exactly the ironclad beetle is so tough, the only thing we really know about it is that if you, the person at home watching this video, decided to elbow drop one wearing a suit of armour, it would, wouldn't, damn it. Fuck! I was so close to getting that line. Anyway, yeah, if you did that, it wouldn't really hurt or not. It, damn it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, if you at home did that, it would only annoy the beetle slightly. Fuck, why am I doing so bad with my lines today? I can't put my finger on why. Although, without the drinking and the hilarious response to the fact that this you are was, drinking... Yeah, this would have been a very dry video about a very tough beetle, but I do reckon I would have gone on quite a large tangent about a Broly beetle, because a Broly beetle sounds great. <laughs> because a Broly beetle... Because it'd be a Broly with four arms, it'd just be Goro with Broly's hair. 
Oh, please vote shot that as well. Do you reckon people ever tune into these videos, like, say this is their first one, and they get to this point and be like, why have they spent five minutes talking about Dragon Ball Z? Because Dragon Ball Z is way more interesting than this fucking beetle. As evidenced by the fact scientists don't even bother to study something like survive being hit by a car. If I was a scientist and I'm sat there in my science room with my science coat and my science goggles on, and I look down and see a beetle and I go, oh, fuck you. And I lift my foot up and it goes like that. And it rolls off, I'd be like, I will dedicate my life to studying this insect. I need to know why this thing's so badass. Instead of going, eh. So Carl, you've just described a god tier beetle on par with Saitama and Goku. Yeah, this is like Saitama in like beetle form, basically. So what does the beetle eat? I'm assuming it hunts other beetles. You think, yeah, you think this like, beetle eats like other beetles, snakes, the dreams of children. No, dead wooden leaves. Like it hunts, like, you know, the most dangerous game of all, a log. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently the theory about why its shell is so tough is the same with the hero show I mentioned earlier, where it needs to force itself underneath, like, large logs to eat, like, you know, the, I guess, the tender log juice underneath. Mm. <laughs> and uh, so it's its shell, it shell's so tough to stop it from being crushed by the weight of logs as it, like, forces its way into them. But, yeah, he's dead wood and some leaves. That's what this, like, mega, ultra... God tier beetle, like stun the insect, like worships this thing as a god. And it's like, what does it eat? Oh, some, some leaves. And does it sting? No, it doesn't sting, for anyone asking. Does it bite? No, it doesn't bite, for anyone asking. So yeah, the strongest being on earth is a small, tiny beetle that eats leaves and lives in Texas and doesn't really do much shit. Just sits there. What a depressing end. What? A, what, what like an unfortunate legacy for this creation that we made during this video. Yeah, it eats uh, leaves. So I think people have probably noticed by now that we seem to be drinking on the Friday videos. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we should make that a thing because I don't want to commit to drinking every week when we meet up to make these videos. Like last week I was ill and it's not a good idea to drink. I'm still a bit ill now, but I'm less ill than I was back then. And obviously, um, it's never a good idea to drink when you're really not feeling well if you want to get better. But yeah, I like the idea of like drinking Friday. I just can't think of a name for it. I don't know. Throw it to the comment section. Yeah, if you can think of a good name for like the videos we do on a Friday of drinking ones. Because the original plan was to do a drinking video on a Saturday and make a separate fourth video where we drank specifically. But I don't know if that'd be something people want. Because I, lo I love our drinking videos, but they're not always gold. Mm. Because there are times when I've looked at videos, that's not, I hate that. All the jokes I don't like. That's something I don't think people realise. Like, you look at it, they look very amateurish, but I don't think people realise it's amateurish by design. Because what is it I told you when we first started? It, professionally unprofessional. That's the one. And I love the idea we're professionally unprofessional, where we have a very high production value, we heavily research everything we do, we fact check everything, the editing's on point, but the videos look like shit. <laughs> and I've told Brad, like specifically, he said like, oh yeah, I can get rid of the corners on the green screen. I said, no, I love the corners on the green screen because you know what? No one else does it. Because now we know we have a distinctive style and you know what? There are people out there who kill for that. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Oh God, I shit myself, my beer. I worried for my beer. Then. That's been a while. I know, bloody hell, calm down. He knew we were talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry, old Bess, we'll look after you. <laughs> old Bess. Oh. No, I love this thing. This, like, if you ever get rid of this, I'm taking it to my house. I don't give a fuck. I mean, invest in... I always thought if we get a bigger studio, I'm going to have to get a... Oh, Jesus. It's my baby. I'm going to have to get a bigger one because obviously you're going to need to stand further away Mate, from Mate, if you ever get rid of this, you're fired. <laughs> this pays your rent. No, no, but the point, right, if we ever set up a studio, because you have to stand a certain distance away yeah. from the screen, I'd have to recreate that, but on a larger size. No, we're not, mate. This is like Buster from Mythbusters. I love that now we'll know if anyone ever tries to rip us off because we'll see the corners. Yeah. And I, we've seen some people try to do it, haven't we? Oh, we have. A few people have tried to rip off the look of our channel. I look and I go, oh, they think they're good. 